welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let me welcome the absolutely beautiful and vivacious, delectable. I'm just using words to describe sexiness of food now. Just adjectives. You guys just have to. Oh, somebody's watching the stream. Somebody mute it. Yep, got it, got it. Perfect. Rob, we're professionals. Yeah, I know. Yeah, guys, come on. Don't, don't, shh, shh. Uh, Welcome, (laughs) welcome to Podcast Rob and James Hatton of the Something Something cast to the live stream for the cure. Two of of the biggest supporters of this event over the years. Absolutely love you guys. What is up? Welcome to the live stream for the cure. What's going on, man? Thank you so much for having us back again this year. Definitely an honor to be here. I'm thrilled I was able to get to hang out with you guys so far playing jackbox games and goofing off no thank you for having us and cheers absolutely amazing so you guys are going to be with us for the next hour what kind of fun shenanigans? well okay before we get to the shenanigans because there will be shenanigans before there we get be. there though okay. can you guys tell us give us a little flavor give us a little taste of what the something something cast is all about well we've kind of evolved uh since we've started we're actually coming up on our seven year podcast anniversary this july Jeez. and if you had told me seven years ago that we'd still be doing this i i would have laughed at you Same. if you told me seven years ago we'd still like each other i'd be amazed. yeah that's true but uh <laughs> we started fair, out as kind like of a host so it's fine we Especially started out as chat. kind of like a bi-monthly uh beer and pretzels kind of pop culture podcast uh and we've kind of evolved over the past couple years to doing a weekly show but we have a different theme every week so the first week of the month we do our regular quote-unquote podcast episode uh the second week of the month we do a something in review where we do a movie review uh the third week we do what's called mysteries of the something verse where we've talked about like atlantis and the bermuda triangle and stuff like that and then the last week of the month we do a show called the end where we discuss just the series finale of a TV show, whether we have seen that TV show or any of the episodes prior to that or not. I love that idea. It's, I still, I love that idea. <laughs> it's a lot it's, of fun going yeah, into a show like 90210 where we've never seen any of it and just watching the final episode and doing a whole, whole show on it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> That's absolutely there's, amazing. There are shows that I know I've seen the whole thing that I just want to hear what his reaction is. Eventually, we'll be doing Gilmore Girls because I really just want to see Rob's reaction just from watching one episode <laughs> as a huge Gilmore fan. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we try Lord. and do all sorts of things. We also do radio dramas from time to time, like whatever whatever we're feeling the vibe for just goes up on the site. Yeah, that's what I love. I love a good variety. I love a good mixture of good blending of flavors uh, as it were so as we were mentioning before shenanigans there will Absolutely. be some shenanigans <laughs> at some point here so what do you guys have planned for us this evening so uh we've taken a riff of an episode we did a while ago we did an episode on zombie kill teams where uh hatton and i put together our uh team to survive the zombie apocalypse and then we had a guest come in and judge which team we thought was gonna be the best uh, so we put a little bit of a spin on that, and we've decided that we're going to do heroes versus villains. Mm. Uh, we have we're going to pick three of our own. Uh, we get to choose one from the world of books, one from movies, and one from uh, a TV show. But then our opponent gets to sandbag us with our fourth team member from any one of those three. Uh, so, wow! Look at that. Hey, there we go. And I wanted to pu- put this in here as well, because these are some prizes that you guys are actually going to have uh, up yep. for grabs during this segment. So please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, we're just going to give them away to anybody who's donating, right? Uh, top three donations. So top, top donation donations. this hour is going to get their pick, and then we'll go second highest and third highest. And I top got a list donos. right here. I'll be writing them down and everything. So we're all good. You're going to do and- the work. See that, Gerald? He's doing the work. <laughs> Professionals. <laughs> but our uh, we have a gift stick from Really Shameless Vinyl. Um, we have from Scratch the Surface a set of die, die shot glasses from all your different D, et cetera. Those shot and also, look so cool, man. <laughs> and a uh, pack of paints from TurboDork.com. They donated them to us. Great people, especially from uh, model painters and miniatures painters. They're excellent. Yeah, Turbo Dork basically said, hey, I'd love to have paints that do this. I can't find them out there anywhere. So I'm going to learn how to make paint. And they started their own business in their apartment. And now they have a couple of employees. But it's 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 the equivalent of 
uh, like batch brewing mm -hmm. from a beer, but yeah. in model paints and they're fantastic stuff. So they were uh, awesome enough to donate an eight pack of their color shift metallic paints to us that we're going to give away. Very, very nice. That's amazing. That is awesome. Yeah. Very Thank cool. You. But that means we need to, we need to hear uh, the Shane McMahon theme song. Yeah. It needs to happen. Awesome. Every time somebody donates, I'm like, money, money, money. I sing every time. I'm a huge wrestling nerd. Every time someone and the donates, more Shane people donate, falls and the, the more we drum. hear that noise, the less we have to talk. So <laughs> that's also true. The overall hour will go better the more donations we have. <laughs> so, yeah, but guys, then, make it rain, guys. Top three donos. Those are the prizes right down there uh, on the stream. They're below me uh, in the in the overlay. So just take a look at those, and they are right there. And Rob buried the lead. You get to decide who wins the fight tonight. Yep. So you are the guest judge. I'm my body is so ready for this. <laughs> so shall we shall we start us off again? We're going one from movies, uh, one from TV, one from books, and then the sandbag. You want to start mm. us off, Rob? Uh I'll let you go first. Oh, son of a Rassum Frassum. <laughs> So this started because I have two lists and I was telling him this earlier. So now he's using it against me. I had two lists. One list is the, uh, the, the human shaped characters and one list of like, I had Smaug on the first version. I'm like, that might just be, mm, let's smog might be just too big. Let's go human shaped. And I put that limitation on myself. So let's start with movies. Movies uh, is my my power hitter. I needed some muscle. Oh, I'm not. Am I supposed to be going in through all my descriptions here? Yeah, Should that's I fine. The, all right, we'll give the football run up. Yep. So we need the muscle. So we have none other than the original T800 Terminator okay. from books. I needed uh, someone with a plan, someone with some power, and someone with a legion behind them. We chose none other than the Dark Lord himself, Voldemort. Ooh. And then at the top of the list, the man who wields these units and sends them to battle from the TV show, not the comic, none other than Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. Hmm. Would you like your sandbag now, or would you like me to list my three and then we'll come back to your sandbag? I think we should come back to the sandbag. I think we should okay. go power for power and then feel completely overwhelmed by being screwed. Now, I want to preface the fact that James and I have not discussed our lists with each oh, other no. at all. <laughs> so there was no like pre-planning of any of this. And I guarantee you, zero people watching this thread right now are going to believe any of that. Are you, so, oh, how bad is it? So uh, for, <laughs> I'll start oh with my book option. Uh, my book option, uh, I went with somebody who was kind of thrust into this world and didn't necessarily <laughs> want to be, even though he always kind of wanted to get out of the situation he found himself in. Mm. Uh, I My first pick is The Boy Who Lived. Uh, I have Harry Potter Man. from the books as my book pick. Uh, okay. From, from my movie pick. From my movie pick. Uh, this is probably one of my two power hitters. I kind of went with two different power hitters here. And they're going to complement each other like crazy. Hmm. Uh, it's interesting that you chose uh, somebody who is a machine from yours because uh my power hitter from movies actually not only fights the machines but controls the entire program that yes. runs through everything i went with the chosen one neo for my movie option wow a quick aside uh, i almost picked agent smith okay fair I, enough i had almost picked him go ahead and, and then for my tv option uh i went with quite possibly uh, not only did he save the cheerleader, but he did save the world. Uh, I went with Peter Petrelli from Heroes. There you go. All right. 
Now, again, we when for anybody who listens to the show, uh, you'll notice that this happens a lot where we do our little listicle episodes. And notoriously, we start off with like oh, five best things that we like. And it ends up having to be, you know, three because we listed two of the same thing. We every share a brain, time. apparently. It's miserable. Um, all right. So it is. Let's, let's just run me down again. We have Voldemort, Terminator and Wilson Fisk versus and yours. Uh, Harry Potter, Neo, and Peter Petrelli, and your sandbag. Oh, we're gonna just well. First, I wanted to hear Nick's opinion. What do you think of these? Oh, teams? okay. So let's see. So, so again, uh, James has Voldemort, Kingpin, Wilson Fisk, and the Terminator, the T eight hundred. Yep. Okay, and then Podcast Rob has the Boy Who Lived, Harry Potter, Neo, and uh, Peter Petrelli. Okay. Yep. First take. Ooh, first take. Okay. Yeah, so... Before we get into the nitty gritty of the whys and the hows, we start picking each other apart. What's your first oh, blush yeah. take on that? Oh, man. Uh, I got to say, I got to say, now, granted, James, James with he who shall not be named, he who must not be named. I mean, that's, that's, that's going to be a, 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 probably, I think, the, the key in your list depending on sandbags here but podcast rob man you're talking i mean peter petrelli's basically got whatever power he wants kind of and you know i mean neo as well i mean man that's a list that's a list i don't know i'm maybe I'm like you know a little little bit maybe maybe podcast rob a little bit right now but we're going to see what kind of sandbag you're going to throw his way cuz you could int- you could very very easily tank a team lickety split where do, uh, all right so shall we with the sandbagging or please i had to make so, a list i had to write them all down sorry i was i was writing them all down <laughs> so i knew no worries i had to open wikipedia pages i'm with you yeah <laughs> <laughs> So in the same way that I looked at my my starting this off and I was trying to build my list based on, you know, the optimizing, we go to the sandbag looking to minimize. Sure. I have a lot of powerful people. I want with somebody not so powerful. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I have a list of, again, three. So I'm going to give you the two that didn't make it. Two that okay. didn't make the cut. Uh, Skolnick from Revenge of the Nerds. Okay. Because he's too smart. Right. He's too brilliant. Um, Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Because. Okay. Loy sauce? I just heard Loy sauce somewhere. <laughs> the man's got brilliant luck. He does. So there's one here. Oh, the dog is the brains of the operation. It's true. <laughs> Don't call Velma that. It's great. <laughs> So I had to go with someone who, even in the face of adversity, runs and screams for her father. Your sandbag, sir, is cougar bait herself, Kim Bauer. Oh, my God in heaven. Wow. No. Okay. Oh, my Lord. Wow. She turns this whole thing into a... uh, Make sure she survives mission. <laughs> Remember how great the rest of season two of 24 is? And then she's, at, meanwhile, getting stuck in the woods and caught in cougar tra- <laughs> <laughs> Just in the... Ev- boop, 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 wow. boop. And it's just her walking on rocks. All right. Wow. We can work with this, though. We can work with this. Because right. your sandbag, Mon Frere James. Yes, sir. My friend. Uh... He didn't age well. <laughs> not a good life, is, life has not been kind for him. Uh, he ended up living in a trailer park, watching his same movie over and over again for 35 years. Uh, <laughs> there is no fear in your dojo, <laughs> but you do have to deal with Johnny Lawrence as your sandbag. But now Johnny Lawrence. Well, Not... it's it's it it can be any Johnny Lawrence to be perfectly honest because uh, he's not going to help your team. Oh, fair enough. I mean, he does know how to sweep the leg real good. We we're talking about the immortal Zabka of Karate Kid fame, right? 
which which hurts you know that hurts me rob because you know how much i love zapka well that's it was a double-edged sword yeah that and i had sweep the leg by no more king stuck in my head for the past week so uh zabka nick is my favorite 80s villain of all times in karate kid just one of the guys uh what's the one with rodney dangerfield back to school back to school yeah god back to school is so good <laughs> oh, triple man. lindy all right, so I got Johnny Lerner. Add him to my list because now yeah, he is exactly. locked, sealed, delivered. Hmm. <laughs> His name's not Johnny. I'm looking at the now, yeah, I'm just kind of. Whew. Okay, okay. I just, I like, I like that you're taking it in, Nick. I like that mm. you're sort of absorbing it into oneself, like osmosis, like. Uh. <laughs> All right, my friend. Why don't you begin with with how you see this battle wielding? Whew. All right. So uh, I think the obvious pair up of uh, Harry Potter versus Voldemort. I'm not really sure what case I need to uh, pitch forward because that that story has already been written. We know how that that matchup is going to end. Uh, but. Uh, he did take on one of the most powerful menaces to the Wizarding World twice. He survived twice. Uh, he is the uh, rightful owner of the Elder Wand and will never have it taken from him because he did rebury it with Dumbledore without being defeated, without losing it. So uh, he's got his brain smarts going on in there. He has a plethora of spells that he can use uh, at his disposal. Uh, he's taken on Death Eaters. He's, I don't really, he's not going to have any problem. If, if Voldemort is the biggest issue he's going to have in your team, he's certainly not going to have any problems with Johnny Lawrence. I mean, <laughs> come on, that's not even going to be an issue. I like uh, the way you talk about Harry Potter like he is a man of war lyric. He wields the other wand. He could be. He battles the heavens. Death to false Potter. Uh, <laughs> if we go to Peter Petrelli from there, I mean, uh, the main reason I picked him is because he hates redheads in the future. Well, that zing. Too. Uh, but he okay. went from having his empathic mimicry to ability replication. So anything, anything your guys can do, Peter can do better. He just has to hang out with them for a little bit, and then he's going to get any of those powers from Voldemort, so he'll be able to wield that same dark magic. Uh, he's going to have... Uh, what were your other guys? After Voldemort, uh, I kind of... Oh, yeah, just faded out. Uh, Terminator? Yeah. To the Terminator? Oh, the T one that T one thousand is not even. He doesn't even have to mimic anything from the T one thousand from the T eight hundred. T eight hundred. Yeah, uh, and because T one thousand is way too big of a of a weakness, so I went with it. Anyway, yeah, Wilson Fisk. Yeah, I think the only person he would really need to worry about is he could Peter could mimic Voldemort, or he could mimic Neo, who's like really kind of my heavy hitter there. He's just a twofer at that point. And I mean, putting Neo against the Terminator. Here we go. That that is kind of a good. Oh, we have a donation coming we in. What? We have what? nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents from Destruction in Human Form, Mr. Jared Taylor. Thank you so much. And he just rounded it off, guys. We are at sixty-eight hundred dollars officially, sixty-eight percent of the way to our goal of a future. Hashtag immune to cancer toward that goal, toward that goal. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Jared. And of course, Jared is now in the running, the top running for one of the prizes. So if you guys want a shot at one of the prizes, you just have to be one of the top three donors during the stream and you can win. So get those donations in, please get those donations in right now. I'll actually blow that up a little bit on the screen so you guys can actually take a look at the at the prizes just a little bit closer. Nobody needs to see my face that close up. Jesus. <laughs> That's yeah, we're in a awesome. podcast, not Ew. for the video. Yeah, exactly. We have faces <laughs> for radio. Yes, yeah, I, I was looking at, like looking at our lists. 
this is a time this is a perfect sort of time life chess set like if you're gonna have Voldemort on one side you're gonna have Potter on the other yeah you're have it really is that this uh will come to you for twenty dollars plus shipping and handling a month for the next 64 months and after four years you can play a game of chess the something something cast time life yeah memorial chess set yeah I mean the only <sighs> Kim Bauer is like she really does add zero to this team like absolutely well, yes uh the only the only thing uh, the only positive thing i could say is uh she did work for uh ctu so she uh using a gun is not foreign to her and since she made it to to, to day eight uh she she has some sort of uh survivability so as long as she can kind of keep herself alive and not become a nuisance or a hindrance to the other members of the team uh there's there will be your yeah, there there yeah, there's exactly. the rub right there exactly <laughs> excuse me mr neo where's the bathroom <laughs> I had to go for hours. Man, that was a good. That was a good sandbag. She like absolutely. She <laughs> nothing to offer here. She's no, just like a giant anchor on the on the team. Just a giant anchor. Yeah, exactly. I should have given you like bulk or skull from the Power Rangers. Oh Jesus. my Jesus! I, yes. I at least gave you somebody with some yes. sort of martial arts skill. Where's Justin? Justin, if Justin's in the chat right now, he probably just passed out at the mention of bulk and skull from the Power Rangers. <laughs> I guarantee you he's he's in the chat. If he's in there, Justin, if you're in there, he's got to be just back flipping right now. <laughs> Funny, I watched a on a just to jump to the asides as is our nature. I watched a horror movie last night, uh Deathgasm, which is a heavy metal zombie movie from New Zealand. The biggest sort of claim to fame this movie has other than the most exploded heads in a single film is that two of the actors in it are former power rangers just randomly okay so the, the guy who was doing the commentary was like and he was in power rangers and so was she not the original group of power rangers though. no this one of them was samurai and the other one was like neo or something gotcha ew <laughs> but uh deathgasm brilliant much better than it deserved to be you know james we we've podcasted with each other long enough that i'm sensing this is a stalling technique on your <laughs> a little bit is it, is it is it is it um no because let's address let's start at the top here sure you where you may have skipped over what i think is truly the 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 real meat of my team in the kingpin this is not a big giant comic book guy. This isn't Duncan from the the Affleck vol movie. No, this is Big Mama Jamma Wilson Fisk. Tear you apart socially, emotionally. I would argue that if Wilson Fisk chose to destroy Harry Potter, it would be really easy. He goes home to Privet Drive and the house is in foreclosure. Aunt Petunia's <laughs> green matter <laughs> coating the kitchen. Dursley, um, yeah, Dursley, I, okay, go ahead. They'd find Dursley six miles away, covered in his own filth. It's if you start, if you're correct, if we just go line for line, Potter for Voldemort, Peter Petrelli for Wilson Fisk, Neo for the Terminator. I, I won't lie, I'm kind of boned. But Wilson Fisk with a legion of Cobra Kai thuggies behind him. <laughs> There's no fear in this. Dojo. <laughs> See, that's where Kim Bauer's gonna come in. Because as good as Wilson Fisk was, the minute a woman gets involved, oh, that's I, fair. 
I don't speak girl well. <laughs> and then he'll stare at a painting for six hours. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, the t- I won't lie, the Terminator versus Neo really, really boned me. Because <laughs> I can't... I- I mean, I could argue they're a different net altogether, but yeah. it's a real. But, but is it? Is it? Is it? I know if I was writing that fiction, and I might later, deep into the <laughs> night, that starts off with Neo infecting the Terminator and then ends in gentle petting. That's just the way I write my fiction. Ah, I. I can't. I all I can do is hope that the Terminator would go after, um, the other one. Uh, TV. You had Peter Petrelli. Now, at the end of Heroes, what was Peter Petrelli's power? Uh, at the end of Heroes, Peter Petrelli was he had what was called uh, ability replication, so uh, he could shit. kind of. It's more limited than what he originally had. Uh, he can mimic the other powers, but he has to have physical contact to do so. Mm. So his, probably the one that I would be most afraid of him pairing up against. Oh, we have another donation coming in now. Chris Yaney, $21 donation. Very nice. He said, I think the, the cartoon, the cartoon uh, Wilson Fisk, I think he said, is the best. Yep. From the Dan from the shaking his head. Vincent the cartoon Monofrio, Wilson Fisk from which one? which one? Which cartoon? The, the Spider-Man, Spider-Man cartoon. Spider-Man cartoon, I think you said. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good, Wilson Fisk. I just love Daredevil Fisk or TV Daredevil Fisk. Um, Petrelli's biggest nemesis is probably going to be Voldemort because if Voldemort can keep him at distance with his spells, then Petrelli could be hosed. Hmm. I would let. So to speculate on this really quickly, I th- I would like to say that Voldemort. Now we can argue this is a one for one on a football field to the death situation, but do the Death Eaters come into play? Just imagine the imagine the the street warfare of Wilson Fisk's heavies, the Death Eaters, and the Cobra Kai all <laughs> marching through. The dark streets of fiction land. <laughs> you're, okay, you're, so you're so you're gonna roll deep now. You're gonna bring everybody in. I'm, I'm just saying, like, they, there's power in numbers, and these I are mean, villains. Because I mean, d- uh, please do not forget about uh, Dumbledore's army. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we don't even need uh, an entire army. You know, all the all the cave dwellers from the matrix movies we really just need morpheus and trinity to back up neo uh and petrelli's got his brother uh who was president um so he's got like the power of the federal government behind him (laughs) all right you got guys in black geese but they have they have cobras on them (laughs) and they all live in the same trailer (laughs) it's gotta add like plus one charisma at the minimum I mean, I'll give you that. You you probably have the better outfits. They are, in I, fact. I won't, I, I won't dissuade you from that. And the best theme song, if I would, they are the best around. You yeah, think I'll give you that too. But I'm not necessarily sure the musicians are going to add much. I mean, unless you count them like field bagpipers trying to, you know, throw morale at your team from the sidelines. When we discussed this earlier today, I said to you that there's there's sort of the one thing I have to worry about picking the villains team is, is that generally villains lose. And that's because Correct. there's always a hero to, to counterbalance against them. Right. And it just so happened that you, my friend, have picked one of the exact heroes to my villain, one who... Honestly, when Dark Horse gets the comic rights of Matrix versus Terminator, and they will, uh, Neo's got an armory army of Terminators. And then, I mean, you were the one who watched Heroes, so you probably have to write that story. But 
I think I, I legitimately, unless I have the power of numbers, I, I think I'm boned. And I and I will support my my team to their death. I will stand by their side and I will walk the streets with them. I will wear my dark mark proudly. <laughs> <laughs> you do have the gear for it. I will I say did. that you do I, have I, the gear for it. I also do have a I have my dark mark sweatshirt. There's that concern though. There's that concern. So James, I think your absolute best bet. You have to find a way. Uh, to basically use the anchor, the sandbag, Kim Bauer, to knock out. Because she's going to get in trouble at some point. Oh, yes. And need rescuing by someone on the team. So your only hope is to hope try to get her into a situation. So maybe use somebody in the team to try to put her into a situation where she will immediately need to be rescued because it's Kim Bauer. And, you know, that will distract at least... Let's see, who's the one that – Peter Petrelli would definitely be the one that would try to save her first. He'd have to, first. yes, and then leave her in the future to die. Yeah, there you go. I mean, Boom. didn't she spend, like, an entire season, like, tied to a radiator or something? Pretty much. That was season one, yeah. And Wilson Fisk could keep her in a basement. <laughs> oh, that I have – I mean, just to look at occasionally, <laughs> strangely, through glass. <laughs> Oh my he's just gonna he's just gonna he's just gonna nail her to a wall and have <laughs> ever be a new piece of art. Yes. Very lovely. Uh, I do Your agree that so Peter Petrelli I do agree that Peter Petrelli would be uh he she would be his cheerleader, so he would oh, uh yeah. he would have to uh, he would have a choice. Neo well, then we're <laughs> Neo uh, he who cares? You know, she's just she's just the blonde chick in the matrix, the Neo. Meanwhile, Melissa uh, in the chat's just super thirsty for a Milo Ventimiglia right now. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I mean, he's an attractive man. I'm. Mm -hmm. Then when he he dies, needs to stay away from my awesome. Rory Gilmore. That's all I'm saying. Damn it. Mm. Always comes back to Gilmore Girls with me. So, let's see. I I keep running into the well. How do you take out Neo? He's a damned jesus allegory <laughs> like i would have need to never mind <laughs> i would have need to have picked a crap Pontius pilot <laughs> okay uh, but i didn't how do you take down techno jesus hmm. so Is Neo, does Neo have his powers on the Nebuchadnezzar? Like when he's uh, he does not have his he does not have of his the realm. full powers outside of the Matrix, but since he is one with the Matrix, uh, and That's he basically has that connection to the Matrix, uh, as the Oracle says, going back to the Matrix's inception. Uh, he does sense things. So he can be on the Nebuchadnezzar and sense when those uh, squid machines are coming to attack. Oh, yeah. yeah cyber jellyfish. Yeah, yeah. He So he can sense them, but he doesn't have the same kind of like snap, you're done that he does when he's plugged into the Matrix. This mm -hmm. is the game. That's it. Because the term I was I was confusing myself by thinking that this was happening in the world in which Neo is known. This, this isn't within the Matrix. There's no chick in the red dress and rotoscoping 3D cyber kung fu. No. This is the real world with magic and Wilson Fisk. Say Jalevi, Jalevi, $5 donation in the chat. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. It just said testing. Yes, your test worked. Thank you. Six. The test successful success guys less than 200 dollars to go before more hashtag moonshine for drew oh that sounds delicious mm. so to 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 bring it back and please yay donations if we're on earth or we're on some prime material plane terminator's just firing a bullet through his cyberpunky ass he's just a man 
with but a surfer who, haircut. But who's to say that this isn't all part of the Matrix? Right. <laughs> you mean even this right now? Oh, shit. <laughs> Dan, Dan, which pill did you take? Did you take the red pill or the blue pill, Dan? Dan took them both. Are we screwed? That's the purple pill. No, that one's just grapeity grape. Oh, that's it's just grape. Never mind. You're good. Oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> Ask him if he has a problem. Uh, never mind. I was. Sometimes I need to gauge audiences. Um. So, I would say then that we come to an impasse as to the the field of battle. If we are dealing with a matrix cyberscape, well then. It doesn't matter, Neo won anyway. You didn't even need two other guys. It was just Neo all along. But if we're on Earth, if we're in a world, I would say that he would know the Terminator's there. He could sense that perhaps there was someone knocking door to door looking for Sarah Neo. But at the end, it's still just a man with a giant gun and a metallic exoskeleton versus a really, really boss trench coat. To you, sir. I mean, I get where you're trying to come from. <laughs> uh, and I will not dissuade you that it could be a good argument. Uh, however, uh, we have to we have to take all of the uh, TV and movie and book multiverses and we have to make them all live together in one giant MCU clusterfuck. That's true. Because uh, there is no Cobra Kai at Hogwarts. So if you're going to have uh, Johnny Lawrence and Voldemort, then we have to assume that everything, don't roll your eyes at me like that. We have to assume <laughs> that everything uh, is congealed under one giant umbrella, as it were. So so <laughs> this is all plugged into part of the Matrix. To be fair, I was more rolling your eyes at the idea that there isn't Cobra Kai at Hogwarts, because if I went there, you're damn right there would be. <laughs> okay, so what? so where's your letter? All you got to do is just teach some of those Slytherin bastards how to do some, you know, karate chops and stuff. You'd be fine. You can imagine, uh, what is it, Crab and Crab and Goyle and uh, Draco, like, oh, dressed in the sure. skeleton <laughs> outfits. I can totally see Draco and Johnny Lawrence. It's, it's an easy one for one. <laughs> Disc VC Geek donated $20, and he said George sent him. Thank you so, so much for the $20 donation. There he is. Thanks, George. No, oh, and he said, and he just said in the chat, "Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, Snape." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was that your Alan Rickman? Twenty points. Now you got to do the whole rest of the segment in that voice. Oh crap! Oh, you're hosed. <laughs> I'm shit. Hosed. Crap. <laughs> Here comes the money. Oh. We had, we had a very short-lived segment where we did uh ladies and gentlemen oh. a daisy head one hundred dollar donation and i just missed the hang on now i gotta open it because i just missed the yeah please the in loving memory thing in there that was a one hundred dollar donation guys fifty four dollars away from more moonshine for drew and seven thousand dollars for a future immune to cancer guys that is absolutely amazing uh thank you so so much for the amazing donations and yeah i want to read that uh, i want to read that dedication i was going to take me just a just a moment here to load it it goes away so fast and then i'm like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um and while while you are loading that up just to remind all the people that donate during uh, our time here we have some giveaways for the top donators yes. uh, scratch the surface <clears throat> the d the dice um, shot glasses. We have a gift certificate from Really Shameless, uh, which is a nerdy vinyl decal company, and a pack of paint from TurboDork.com. So, yeah, so that was uh, so it was from a Daisy Head one hundred dollar donation in loving memory of your brother slash uncle Rob. Thank you very very much. Thank you very 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 much. I made me misty. 
man, almost 7K. Jesus. It's God. wonderful. You guys are crushing it. You guys are absolutely, absolutely amazing. 7,000 with two days to go. That's, whew. I got to tell you, I've had the stream on since you guys started on Thursday night and just watching, like we kicked off on at 10% and just watching how the percentage has been climbing every hour of every day. It's, it's amazing. It's beyond it's absolutely words. Amazing. I, I don't I mean, even have words for it. It's it's so amazing to see the amazing generosity of. of uh, here comes the money. And here we there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Officially, seven zero zero zero. That's another donation from Destruction in Human Form, Mr. Jared Taylor, rounding it off to seven thousand dollars for cancer research, guys. Seventy percent, seventy percent, baby. Put it up. Yeah, Jared Jared ignored Christiani's instructions in the chat to donate it so we could get it to 696969. <laughs> nice. Oh man, thank you so so much Jared and guys. 7K baby. 7K. Congratulations. That oh. is on Friday night. It's fantastic. I just Yeah. I, that's crazy. My god in heaven, guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. Dude, I mean legitimately, I'm blown away this year. I'm absolutely blown away. God. Well, that, what were we doing? So, were we doing? Were we doing team stuff? Huh? What happened? Uh, what? <laughs> before, Sorry, before we get to, uh, before we throw everything back over to you, Nick, and have you uh, crown the champion for absolutely uh, zero title or trophy uh, between Hat and myself. Only bragging the rights. The prestigious. Uh, I would probably right. say uh, the next thirty podcasts or so. I'm sure the winner will keep bringing this up. Uh, but I want to say personally, uh, thank you. And Dan and everybody else who puts this together year after year, uh, you and I have had conversations about why this uh, specifically is important to me. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so personally, thank you. And thank you, the royal thank you from everybody who's watching, everybody who's a part of this. This is a absolutely monstrous undertaking. I can't even conceive of all the work that you guys do probably throughout the year, even just leading up to this. I'm sure once this is over on Sunday, you'll take a break Monday, Tuesday, you start figuring out stuff for next year. Uh, it's an ongoing process, but <laughs> you, sir, have the biggest shoulders of all because you keep making this thing happen year after year. And if nothing else, thank, thank you me. so much. Thank you. It's, 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 it's worth it. And, and, and I've run, and of course, uh, you know, your dad's picture is in the is in the is in the little slideshow we've been showing at different times uh, throughout the stream and everything, but uh, yeah, no, it's all for all for the benefit of right above my head, right up here, a future immune to cancer because that is a future that I want to live in, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. So yes, thank sir. you, God, man, so much, so much amazing, so much, God, God stop making me misty. I get you out of here, Rob, <laughs> son of a bitch. But um, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> told you james you're not allowed to use another voice except for that one the whole rest of the the whole rest of the uh the whole rest of the the stream here what happens if i start going into kermit <clears throat> uh, what happens if i start going full on kermit well here listen we've got an epic film frog i can bring him in here this is epic film frog here and i want to tell you go fuck yourself oh, that was hmm. uncalled for. that's not <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm, guys i'm sorry what kind of, what kind of language is that <laughs> We don't have that language down on something, Castry. That's 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 such a good Kermit. Oh my god, I love it. That's such a good Kermit. Oh my god in heaven, my god. Oh. Rob was gonna was mentioning we did, uh, and they're available still up on the website. We did a series of shows. They're all like two minutes each, where we took famous movie scenes and we did impressions over them. So it would be, you know. Christopher Walken in A Few Good Men. It was uh, the Swedish chef was in one of them. What was, do you remember what they were? We did, well, it was, we did uh, Christopher Walken and Scooby-Doo doing the Iacane powder scene from Princess Bride. Yes. Uh, we did uh, the Joker and Charlie in the Box doing a scene from Tombstone, I think it was. Oh my That's God. right, my Huckleberry. Uh, but we would take, yeah, we would take uh, famous movie conversations uh, and just redo the dialogue. It started with Gollum and Kenny, and I forget who the third one was, but from A Few Good Men, we did the, uh, the courtroom scene, uh, and Kenny did the Jack Nicholson monologue. And I have to say, it is the hardest I've ever seen Hatton laugh, because 
you knew what Kenny was saying, but you couldn't tell what Kenny was saying because the entire Jack Nicholson monologue was <laughs> and uh that was we thought it was funny as hell and we did it for a good while and then we took a pause on it, but yeah. Just another bullet in this gun. <laughs> click, click, boom. All right, Nick. All comes down to you. Time is up. <sighs> okay. So Again, James has Lord Voldemort, Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, specifically from the Daredevil TV show, yes. and the T-800 Terminator. Sandbag, however, is Johnny Lawrence. On Podcast Rob's team, we have Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> if Justin was here, that's how he does it every time. That's how Justin says it every single time. Uh, we have Neo, the one. And we have uh, Peter Petrelli. And then the w- legitimately the worst possible sandbag a team could have, Kim Bauer, who is just... Remember when she brings a baby to work? Like, at CT, like... It's not even her baby. She to, just found it on the street. Yeah. I have to give you that one, Haddon. I thought, I thought I was giving it good with Johnny Lawrence because he's just, like... He's kind of a bully, but he's just a, a pushover uh, to anybody else in any sort of authority, but... If if we were going on sandbags alone, I, I have to defer to King ba- to uh, Kim Bauer. That's yeah, that to, Johnny's, to Johnny's credit, where he may at one moment or two ha- he may have a bad spine at times when it comes to Sensei. Uh, he did win the All Valley multiple times. Oh my 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 my! Yeah, but he lost to a, he lost to a dude with one leg. That's fair enough. Mm. So it's because uh, when Crane Kekinik done well, no defense. True. So I say, like, oh, man, Chris Yaney, Chris Yaney donated $69, never diss nice. Elisha Cuthbert. I'm not dissing Elisha Cuthbert. She's amazing. I love her. Kim Bauer was a She's terrible loved. character. Kim Bauer was never a good character, and that's not her fault either. That's from a writing perspective. The writing for her character was terrible, literally the entire run of 24 for the most part. They tried to make her useful in season three, and they just failed at that too somehow. But uh, so... Uh, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, I think, James, all of the credit in the world to you for legitimately pulling the greatest sandbag out of your hat that you possibly could have. Uh, because even if, so even if uh, you take away, however, one person from Rob's team, if I just, if I cut anybody out of his team because they're having to deal with the Kim situation, which there will be a Kim situation, guaranteed, even if. You pull out Harry Potter. I still think Neo and Peter got the rest of the other team. If you pull out Neo, I still think that Harry and Peter Petrelli still have the other team. You could pull out Peter Petrelli. I still think that Harry and Neo have the rest of the team because, because, I mean, you you kind of, you shot yourself in the foot when you're, when, when you were like, I don't love to pick villains. Because, and then, you know, it's like you said, he immediately picks the Harry Potter to your Voldemort. And oh, yeah. we know how the that truly. battle plays out. We already know how that battle plays out. And, you know, when we just look at it the rest of the way around, I think even with the with the, the king of all sandbags, and you should get special kudos for that. But uh, I've got to give this one to Podcast Rob. I've got to hand it over to Rob for that one. Cause saw that coming. It's just, man... I mean, I mean, you could even have, even if you have like a hundred Cobra Kai's in there, I mean, what are they going to do to Neo when he like flies up in the air and like just clones himself a million times or no, that's Agent Smith. Never mind. I'm forgetting my Matrix stuff. But even still, like Neo can just fly up in the air and like just move things like forget it. Just forget Spin it. 360 and yeah. turn into a hundred different versions. Of him. You can't even, you can't even. And then, you know, I mean. Yeah, I mean, even if you pit up, like, the Terminator against Peter Petrelli, like, can't learn anything from the Terminator, but Peter Petrelli can get enough power. Like, he's got enough powers that the Terminator's not going to be an issue for him. <laughs> like, not even close. Next yeah. time, Rob, you and I do one of these, because I've noticed this, we have to start playing, like, three moves ahead, because I should have recognized you were going to have Peter Petrelli. I just should have known. It's you. You love heroes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, 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 I my, don't my, think my. I expected I how it started. 
didn't necessarily end well. Well, it seems Harry Potter has bested me again. <laughs> so, since the decision has been made, I will I will throw you this one uh, gratis, mon frere. Oh, please. Uh, I think your defense should have been much like he did in the movie have the T-800 sacrifice himself for the good of the team because if he can manage to EMP himself then he basically completely shuts Neo out of the equation altogether fair very fair point very now fair similarly point. Similarly, I expected the uh, response sandbag of, well, if Kim Bauer's in trouble, you know who's coming to save her. Chloe! <laughs> right around the corner, we were going to, I thought you were just going to be like, well, he, now I have Kiefer. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't even, I didn't even, he's, he's got enough on his plate every day just those uh, just things. the fact that she stuck in it she she was stuck an entire 24 hours tied to a radiator like he couldn't be bothered to you know take a lunch break and go save her it's you no know, that show went terrible anyway yeah to, hmm. when it when it got to the point where every single episode was like oh we would have stopped it if we just answered the phone call that stopped ringing by the time we ran into the room i was out mm. yeah well crud audience Folks in the Twitch chat, what who would you vote for? And this is a fight based on solely snappiest dressers. This is this is snappiest dressers. So I'm gonna put the teams, I'm gonna put the teams okay. over here in the in the chat. And you guys in the chat, yeah, let us know. Let there us know go, whose Hattie. team you guys like more. Great How's shirt. that for snappy dresser? I get to be Star Child. That's pretty cool. You do, and that I get is, to be Gene. So that that's is cool. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh my lord! Well, while we wait, while the chat weighs in, guys, uh, yes. and, and and we wrap out the segment here, please let our audience know uh, where they can find you guys out there on the web and everything like that. The easiest place to find everything, Robin Hatton, is to go to somethingcast.com. Uh, it has all of the buttons and widgets and doodads. You can find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and all those other great places. Um, and also if you want other glasses or vinyl or t-shirts of various types, uh, shop.somethingcast.com is the repository where we have all of our stuff, uh, the creative outlets that Hatton and I do to try to do a little side hustle. So definitely check us out over there. Uh, <laughs> and more importantly, stick around after we leave. We are a mere drop in the ocean of live stream for the cure so definitely stick around there's still two more days of amazing shows to come up oh my uh, goodness yes there's and so stick much with great them. content left to come please 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 make sure you guys stick around but please find everything you can for the something something cast out there online i promise you will not regret it they are absolutely amazing um you gentlemen are you going to give away the stuff on the air or are you going to just do it after the after the show after the uh, well, uh, I already have contact information from uh, a Daisy Head. So if CNE and Jared could go to somethingcast.com, get the link to our email there, which is something somethingcast at gmail.com, and just let us know your contact info on where we can send this stuff out. No, uh, Daisy the Head is the top donor. So I will find out from her what she wants, and then you guys. We'll have your pick of the other two, and we'll do it through the email. That cool with you guys? That is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So, you wonderful gentlemen, thank you so so much. This was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And I'm I'm sorry, James. Yeah, it looks like uh, I looks, get it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Oh. We do have so we have two votes for Team Rob in the chat. But then I just saw Deb Kinney came in there. Team James. I'm a Death Eater by nature. She says. Uh huh. Thank you, Blood Scarlet. There are. Dozens of us. Dozens. <laughs> Literally tens of you. Yes. Right, One so, of them. Uh, Death Eater Ravenclaws. There's not many of us. Uh, 
tell your cats and dogs. Yes, Christiani, we will tell your cats and dogs. So yeah, uh, Chris and Jared, congratulations on winning those two prizes. Head over to, again, the link in the chat there, somethingcast.com, and uh, yeah, shoot them over a message so that way you can guys can get hooked up with your prizes. We are, unfortunately, going to have to bid farewell to the amazing gentleman from the Something Something Cast. Nick, thank you. You guys are absolutely thank amazing. You thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys so, so much for, for tuning in to the chat. We're going to say goodbye to them. And then in just a few moments, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be joined by, I think I named this at one point in time. At some point, I, I named them as my absolute favorite podcast out there, or one of them, absolutely one of them. Uh, we are going to be joined by the amazing gentleman from the Interrupted Tales podcast, Alan and Rob. But before we do that, Drew Hallam, get your beautiful self in here because you owe us a shot of moonshine, my friend. <laughs> there he is. He's just waiting. He's he knows. He knows. He look at this beautiful man. I can't hear you, Drew. I can't hear you. Come Drew, Drew, speak to me, Drew. I need you. I need you. Come to me, please. Please. Oh, I can hear you faintly, like very, very faintly, like barely. Nope, nothing. Nope. Did you spill moonshine all over your equipment? Is that what happened, Drew? Our next jerky isn't until 8,000, Melissa. We only do them every 2,000. I, I, th I think, guys, I think we got him so messed up, I think he spilled moonshine all over his equipment. That's my headcanon. I can hear him. I think what it is, it's got to be a cable issue because I can hear you, but I can hear you very, very faintly, so maybe you got a loose cable or something. You spilled moonshine all over it. Don't lie to us. <laughs> oh my lord! Yeah, Danny, Danny, that's very correct. We don't need to hear him to be able to, for him to be able to take a shot. <laughs> oh, Drew Hallam, you beautiful, beautiful man. I love you so, so much. I'm so sorry we can't get your audio working. Cheers, my friend. Oh, what a guy. Thank you so, so much, Drew. I love you, brother. Thank you so, so much. We'll see you at 8,000, my friend. Oh, no. Ah. Oh. 